Hello folks, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to check out Fire Alpaca, a very coolly named drawing package uh, that is completely free. Now when I say completely free, I mean completely free commercial. No price tag involved, but this is not an open source project, so that's not free as in Libra. This is just free as in no cash required. Now there is some advertising. When you do download it, you will see in a second. Uh, speaking of downloading it, you can get it at firealpaca.com. As always, I will toss that link down below. Now, this guy is a very simple, easy to understand program. Now, you'll notice when you first start it up, there is an ad. Um, and really, that's about it. And it's very non-offensive. I don't, it doesn't bother me anyways. But if you are a pure open source purist, there are other options. I will no doubt be covering some of them on this channel in the somewhat near future. But this is the program and it is very easy to learn. So we come out in here, we can create a new drawing canvas. You can choose between comic with various different templates. Uh, not being up on my anime or um, Japanese art, I have no idea what any of these things mean, except for perhaps professional. I think I know what that means. Uh, but I'll just go and create this one. You can also set the, excuse me, RGB color profile or the CMYK color profile that way. Now you set your background to transparent or otherwise. And I will go ahead and create this guy. Now you'll notice straight away there is a grid going on. We can turn that off or on. Uh, here, I think it's under view, like so. So if you do not want a grid, you can turn said grid off. And for the most part, it is a straightforward painting package. Over here, you have your uh, different brush size. You can see the preview of the size as I hover over them, like so. Over here, you have your brush preview, and down here, you have your various different brushes. So for example, a watercolor airbrush, blurring, smudging, pens, pencils, etc. Uh, no, no icons to go with them, which is a little... Uh, different for many packages, but for the most part we can do just about everything you would expect to with their various different brushes here from uh, For example, you could draw with a marker or we could for example draw with flowers Like so obviously your color wheel is up here. You can change it between a wheel and a uh, square setup But it works pretty much how you would expect it uh, Again, we have a bunch of different brushes. You've got your pencil plus you have like a fade in fade out pencil which will draw it um, tapered at each end give you kind of more uh, similar to a traditional brush stroke kind of look you'll notice across the top here we are tabbed so if I create another entry we just open up another tab like so uh, we also have full layer support over here we could create new layers it works just to like any other layer setup you've ever seen each layer has a custom blending mode like you can see here so you could do things like brighten dodge color dodge divide add multiply and get your traditional layer based effects going on and you can modify the opacity there you have a quick navigation for looking around your scene you can also manipulate it its positioning uh, using this slider right here um, and now let's get into some of the kind of unique or cool features for this particular paint program and one of it comes down to there's a nice really well flushed out line tool right here uh, and you can pick how your particular lines are going to work uh, freehand works probably as you would expect it basically we are creating lines well freehand or we can come back up here and do straight out straight lines or we can go to polylines Uh, double click to end or we can go up and so on and so forth now what I really like it for is curve its curved lines are just intuitive there's no um, Bezier spline handle manipulation and I actually get the shape that I try to create almost every time I start setting up a line so their curved line is really slick now the strange thing is I seem to only have three choices for pixel sizes on lines and I'm not sure exactly why that would be, but it seems you can modify it by working with your particular brush, but that's a kind of a strange choice they've done. Now, another real strength with this guy, let's go ahead and just start up a new thing, is these guys right here. Now, these are your snapping lines, and they're pretty awesome. So what I can do basically is do something like a radial snap. So you see here, you can see the manipulator right there, and we can move that around and such. But basically, now your drawing is going to be constrained to that uh, particular layout or pattern so for example if i follow this line oh, i'm still in line mode never mind here let's go back to a pencil so when i draw why am i still in line mode come on pencil we follow the guideline shown like so so if you're drawing down on the angles it will follow in that radial pattern and we've got a bunch of them that we can work with that you basically can follow and those 
are, are guideline shapes for setting things up. So if you're working in a perspective, it can do some really cool stuff. And you can get, oops, you can get neat results very, very quickly. And we've even got a radial one. So if you're doing things on a different, like, well, radially, uh, you can do so easily like this. And basically it's gonna snap and follow those particular shapes. Even cooler is you can actually come in here and we can just sort of draw a shape like that. And then once I'm done drawing that spline shape, this is kind of like a French curve. I can now use whatever shape I just drew as my uh, guideline shape. So now I come in here and you'll see it'll just follow whatever shape that was. And then I can move this guy around and I can, I can manipulate it like so. And then we can just follow that shape. So if you're trying to recreate organic shapes, this is a really cool feature. And I like to see everybody basically follow it. It's like creating your own on the fly, like I said, French curves. And it's pretty cool. You can also flip it vertically, flip it horizontally. And then of course you can get rid of it as fast as you want. So these particular snapping points are a very cool feature here. Now there's a couple areas where this guy, this is not Photoshop and it's not trying to be, it's more about making smooth lines, smooth drawings. And for working on, you know, anime, um, comic books, that kind of stuff. In fact, we can actually get in here and see, uh, we can set up comic book guidelines. So it follows whatever the format or layout is for a particular comic books. So that is what this system is set up to work with. And then as you saw early on, there were so three or four different styles of Japanese drawings that you can work with from templates as well. So that is the workflow they are going for. But you do have a lot of features that you would see from a traditional package like uh, Photoshop, just in a light version. So you see here, we've got some filters, but there's only a handful of them. So if we want to add a Gaussian blur, we can. Uh, there is no preview. Oh yeah, there is a preview. Never mind. I didn't think there was. So you can see there the end result. Nothing too too extravagant. You can also uh, using layers. Now one of the cool things is using layers. You can actually um, let me just go back and find it. You can onion skin. So if you're doing uh, animation, you can turn on onion skin mode. And then you can flip between showing the next and the previous flames and then preview your animations there. So a lot like a package like Krita now supports animation. Uh, Fire Alpaca also has that stuff built in. Um, and then over here, we've got, you know, your typical selection tools. Their magic wand tool works remarkably well. Um, okay, when it works. Uh, maybe it's not liking my blur. Hey, let me undo my blur so we get some sharp edges to work with. So there you see, it actually is doing very, very solid and good edge detection. You can obviously add more by holding down shift. For every command I've used down here, there is a summary of what it does. And then ditto as you are mousing over the various things that are available here, you can see what they do down below. So it's it's pretty straightforward in exactly what it does, but it just does it very cleanly and very well. Um, and like I said, that line tool is one of the nicest I've used yet, and I love their snapping tools. So when you combine the snapping and the crisp lines and the ability to arbitrarily create your own trace shapes, uh, it, it's a really cool package for just straight out inking. And um, yeah, that's the, probably the gist of what this guy has to offer. Here again, you can see this is basically this list right here here in menu form. Uh, you can toggle off all of the interface, everything that we've seen. Um, we saw earlier, you can toggle a grid on and off. You can also do a pixel grid. Now, another thing, nice thing that I haven't really topic, uh, covered on here yet, let me just get rid of my selection. Your uh, performance is really good. So as I'm zooming in or zooming out, it zooms in all the way to the individual pixel level and back out exceedingly smooth. Same with uh, panning and moving around. Uh, it just it's smooth. It, it's, it performs well. It does the selections quickly, almost instantly. And as I said earlier, it's got one of the best magic wand edge detections that I've actually used yet. So that part is definitely impressive about it. Fuel tools, I actually haven't figured out what they do. The divide tool specifically, I had no idea what this does. Played around with it for a while and I still can't figure out what it does. So if you actually use this package and you know what the divide tool does, do please let me know in the comments down below because I frankly just, I, I can't figure it out. But and this is kind of what it is. It's very straightforward. Um, it would be kind of nice if these guys had actual um, previews going on with them. So, you know, a little bit more of an interface instead of just a text list, but that's kind of a small complaint. And you'll notice here, once you actually start working with a specific uh, brush, like for example, here's a watercolor and I draw, oh, I'm in line mode still. I draw on this canvas in said watercolor and then switch out my next color. You will see 
they interact appropriately as you go through. I'm not sure if I showed you this already, but there is your size control for your brush and there is your opacity controls and then each individual specialized brush here. So you see uh, we got color mixing levels available for our water uh, colors here, our complement. And But if I go to the airbrush, we'll have a different set, smudge, fire alpaca brush, leaves. So th that's a straight out part um, particle system brush, but you'll see you've got various different options for actually controlling the brushes there. And that is fire alpaca. There's not really a whole lot behind the scenes because it's a drawing app that knows it's a drawing app that sets out to be a drawing app and it is a pretty solid drawing app. Now I don't do enough hands-on stuff with this kind of stuff to say why you would use this over Krita or why you'd use Krita over this. Um, it, it's just awesome that we have all of these different options. And again, it's cool that they're all actually free as well. Now, now again, free as in money, not free as in Libra. But still, I, I do like not spending money personally. I think a lot of you like the same things. So what do you think? Uh, is Fire Alpaca a cool looking package to you? Have you ever used it? What do you think of it? Specifically, have you used this and Krita or this and Paint.net or this and GIMP or this and the various other art packages that are out there? And what, you know, which ones you prefer and why? And on that final topic, so you can do my job for me, what other painting packages out there that are free, that are relevant to game developers, do you think that I should cover in the future? Again, this isn't really a world I spend a lot of time with. I, I, I'm more of a 3D guy. I'm not a great artist, and most of my artistry work is around texture creation. So I would be interested in getting your feedback on what else I should cover and what you did think of Fire Alpaca. So once again, that is available at firealpaca.com, and I will throw that link down below. All right, talk to you all later. Goodbye.